Hi folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for listening to Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. Today's episode of the show is actually a little bit special. We're here with David Gottfried, who is not just the husband of Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who's the best-selling author of The Hormone Cure and a good friend of mine, um, but also the father of the green movement. Um, if you're familiar with LEAD in terms of building certification. You've probably seen those plaques on uh, thousands of buildings around the world. Well, that was him. So <laughs> it's really cool to have him here because these worlds actually do have a lot of overlap um, in, in terms of enacting change and empowerment, you know, looking at how do you build a movement from the grassroots up, whether it's real food or green building, very similar thing. So uh, we also get a little bit of Sarah and David's dirty laundry. How do they live their lives every single day in terms of uh, what are they eating? What sort of mindfulness practices uh, are, are they doing every day? Meditation. We talk about the nervous system. It's, it's a really cool show, but I wanted to squeeze it in because uh, David's book, Explosion Green, just came out and I really want to help uh, support them. It is a great book it's a terrific cause and there like i said is so much overlap between what we're doing here uh at, on this show and in the health space and kind of like enacting change in the world at large so if you're interested in that then you're definitely going to enjoy this show so uh, a couple of announcements before we get there as always uh you can get free materials and a video course at fatburningman.com if you join the mailing list. And if you're on the mailing list, then you uh, probably know that we just released, me and Jonathan Baylor, who I was just talking to this morning recording another show, uh, who's also a New York Times bestselling author of The Calorie Myth, we did a project together called Fat Loss Masterclass, which is essentially um, we spent uh, over five hours recording um, documentary quality uh, home study courses, essentially, that tell you how you can, how we live our lives, like what are we packing in our suitcases when we're traveling, what's in our medicine cabinet, and how you can, you know, make a green smoothie at home. We have cooking videos with Allison. It's really cool. So if you're interested in, uh, in what we have going on there, then go to Fat Loss Masterclass. Dot com. So in this show with, with David Godfrey, let me just tell you a little bit about his background. David founded the U.S. Green Building Council and World Green Building Councils with GBCs in 100 countries. Uh, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, the GBC movement uh, has likely reduced global warming and ecological footprint more than any other organizations in the entire world. So uh, it's really a privilege to have David on this show, especially just kind of being so upfront about how he lives his life and uh, and how he's chosen chosen to affect the world using green, but also what that means to someone who married a New York Times bestselling health author. It's a really cool meeting in the world. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go hang out with David. All right, folks, it's my pleasure today to be here with a truly wonderful man who's achieved more than almost anyone I've ever met in my entire life, and I'm, that is no exaggeration. His name is David Gottfried, and you might know him as the husband of past guest of the show, Dr. Sarah Gottfried, an author of The Hormone, Hormone Cure, but um, talk about a power couple. David's book is Explosion Green, and it just came out. It's a great read. Um, David, I am so happy to have you here. Hey, awesome to be here, Abel. I love your show, and we loved hosting you, and, oh, and I know Sarah loves you, too. <laughs> we have a great time. So, um, man, there are so many things to talk about here today, but just to bring us up to speed a little bit, aside from uh, cohabitating with, with the genius of the food and hormone world, um, tell us a little bit about the world that you come from um, and, and as it relates to especially sustainability and moving forward, because we're going to be talking a lot about the future in this show. Well, most people would say I'm a green building dude. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I've got about 30 years in green building, going back pretty much to the formation of this movement globally. And uh, at school at Stanford, I was kind of a solar head. I l fell in love with solar energy and I uh, dragged around for decades my model I made of a solar home we had to design. And <laughs> that was probably my best uh, invention. And it cool. was net zero way back when. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. But that kind of scaled up 
uh, from if, if your book is any any indication, tell us where you are now. Sure. And the book's a 20 year memoir of a yeah. story that happened to be about a character who happened to be me. <laughs> and uh, I like the way you framed that. The character who often gets me up in the morning mm -hmm. uh, stumbled into founding the U.S. Green Building Council about 20 years ago. And many of you might have seen our plaques on hundreds of thousands of homes and buildings called LEED. It's the LEED Green Building Rating System, which became the biggest in the world. And yeah. um, later years, Japan was banging on my head and said, hey, we need a Green Building Council. Come to Tokyo and yeah. help us out. And 98, through reverse translation, this younger man gets those goosebumps and <laughs> thinks, well, I got the U.S., I've got Japan, I'm hereby founding the World Green Building Council. And so the book's the story of this model going global. And we have Green Building Councils now in over 100 countries. And yeah. uh, it's just gone nuts. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. And one of the things I like about it so much is that the, uh, the pendulum is swinging, not just in the, the health movement, but also in the sustainability movement, where we're kind of... Uh, from an environmental standpoint, anyway, at a very similar uh, place as we are with health right now, right? And there are a few organizations that are really doing great work that are positioning us well for the future, both with both of those things. And I, I think it's so cool that you uh, are married to Sarah so that like those worlds can talk to each other a little bit. Um, but it really is very much the same thing. So where do you see... Um, the overlap there? Like what, what is sustainability from the ground up in your home? Like how can we live our lives that way? Well, maybe it was divine intention that the <laughs> two of us, Sarah, may meet up. Uh, I was about health of the planet, maybe health of the economy. Yeah. Uh, in our field, we call it the triple bottom line. So there's uh, ecology and environment, there's economy, and then there's social and people. Mm -hmm. And I think in some ways I was missing the third leg of the stool, mm -hmm. and that's Sarah. Yeah. So she brought love and care of people, which I had, but in my world we focus more on technology and what's mm -hmm. a green building. The health of occupants has become extraordinarily important, and her Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so through her, through you, through her dozens of awesome friends, she's got me thinking about not just health of people and food and hormones, but I'm working in health too. Yeah, I'm working in health of the planet. Mm -hmm. And so the planet has humans and other things here, hopefully forever. Mm -hmm. We're working as best we can to eradicate them <laughs> and cultivate nature and plow and plunder. Sure, <laughs> but as we do. But what good is what good is a green building or a Tesla or if inside who's in the green building? Yeah. And that brings us to you and me and our listeners. And if you're toxic, what good is a lead platinum net zero home? Yeah. Enter Sarah and David's dialogues. And so she's got me looking at what I eat, uh, looking at deeper things like stress and mm -hmm. anger and neurology and neuroscience and meditation and, breathing and uh, a million other things that she's brought into my right. world. Which I'm now trying to bring to the green building world. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So what can you bring to this, this world? Well, I think you're doing a lot of it too is first off, I think we're trying to bring hope. Yeah. We've been tagged for some reason. Maybe we're just restless. Right. <laughs> Or maybe our, our synapses bombard so much they bang off of the walls and we don't mm -hmm. like boxes. Yeah. And so we blow them up. Mm -hmm. And I'm here as a change agent, I, I know just like you. And maybe the listeners, I think I was tagged for a bigger purpose than to just make a buck. Yeah. And we're smart enough, we figured out how to do it, but how do you make your buck? Mm -hmm. And what is the impact, the ecological and health impact of the dollar that we're making in the products and the services. And um, so we're here for something bigger. And in, in Judaism, they call it tikkun olam. Mm -hmm. And tikkun is to heal, 
restore, and olam is the world. And in the 16th century, some crazy Kabbalists had invented this principle, and he said the, the divine light, the vessel broke, and that light scattered throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And our job is to put the divine light in yeah. and heal the vessel. And as Sarah's taught me, I have a leaky vessel. <laughs> <laughs> God help, right? <laughs> that just made my day. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. Joseph tells me I'm Pitta. <laughs> that is and so And red awesome. and a million other things. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, the <laughs> yang needs the yin. <laughs> there is, at some point, you just know too much about some of that stuff. You just have to let it loose. And so I, I love that both of you are that way. But so I, I think a piece of that is, um, and obviously a lot of people who are listening to the show, they realize that once they change their health, they kind of have to believe in a little bit of a better world, right? Because that, that's my little dirty secret that I brought up a few times that like the real reason I'm doing this isn't to teach people how to get abs. It's about how to change the world around us um, but starting with yourself and and basically if you if you need to believe in real food and small farms and uh, not monoculture but permaculture and uh, basically using traditions that we've been using for a very very long time um, that basically keep uh, your immediate world and the extended world around it in balance if you believe that that's necessary for the health of your body and it will help you get abs then Sure, I'll appeal to vanity, and I think we can just work with that. And over time, you kind of realize that it's it's a much bigger message. It's about, um, you know, when we let the world be what it was supposed to be all along, all of a sudden we get healthy again. And that's like the, one of the biggest messages that I have. That's what my wild diet is all about. And it, you become empowered by your own natural intelligence that was there all along within your body. Uh, you just need to honor that and basically align that with um, what uh, the reality is of our bodies and where we came from. So let's talk about this. So we brought it up or you brought it up before we started recording here, but I'm really excited to talk about this. Like, where are we going in terms of the brain in the environment? Uh, basically, the way that we're wired, you said, um, the survival, well, I'll let you say it. The way that we're wired um, doesn't necessarily match up with where we're going in the future. Let's just rant on that a little bit. Well, it's interesting. I'm 30 years into green. I hate mm -hmm. to admit my age, but I, I serve on the advisory board of a dozen technology firms. I, for years, chased anything that was cool mm -hmm. and disruptive with a quantum leap in performance. That's, for me, the flashy, shiny sure. green object. Oh, it's I can relate. Like <laughs> yeah. It's a window that goes from clear to dark. It's a, a concrete that sequesters CO2. Yeah. It's a sensor that knows everything. <laughs> right. And does something good about it. Yeah. Um, and there's a guy we've studied in my field, Buckminster Foley, Fuller, Bucky mm -hmm. Fuller from the 50s. And he was just a brilliant genius, worked on these geodesic domes and he wondered and celebrated in the 50s of, hey, technology has arrived. Now all of humanity, those have-nots, can have. Mm -hmm. And since the 50s, which I wasn't here quite in the 50s, but since then I've wanted to honor him by asking now in 2014, why don't we all have? Yeah. And technology has arrived, mm -hmm. in my opinion, almost enough, and yet... Our homes aren't net zero and regenerative. Mm -hmm. Our bodies aren't healthy. My abs don't look like yours yet. <laughs> Working on that. And why not? And yeah. so it led me to stop fully only reading about green and studying technology and rating systems. And I worked on tax credits and greening of countries like China. And mm -hmm. No, no and small task. I had to come home, and home is inside. That's what we're talking about. It's yeah. the soul, but it's also the mind and the relationship between the mind and the soul and this divine intent. Why doesn't that radiate? And the greatest subject was myself. My second book was called Greening My Life. Mm -hmm. 
And it's really David stuck in the, in the mud of, I'm a green guy, why do I want to fly first class? Right. I'm a green guy, why do I want a nice, gorgeous home? Sure. Uh, when we did the really small, tiny one, why did, it, my, why did my ego hurt when I had guests over? Right. And it led me to reading about Eckhart Tolle's kind of mm -hmm. work. Yeah and learning about the pain body and the ego and the relationship to that. And there's like two lines in that book. Well, one of his books called A New Earth. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a green guy, I'm, I'm curious, why is he writing about a new earth? Which I think is a passage from the Bible, but what I've learned is really the, the greatest struggle here is the human mind. Yeah. And we have war and all these other things going on that are just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And I don't believe even with the advent of green technology and all the health stuff we're doing, we're still harming nature, other species, and each other. And we need to wake up. So how are we going to wake up? And why even myself, where I'm trying pretty hard, mm -hmm. do I have all these, you know, cavemen mentalities? Right. <laughs> So that brings us to the amygdala. Sure. You know, if there's a noise in our house, I am out of bed hitting the ceiling, mm -hmm. looking for a baseball bat to run upstairs. Right. Sarah's <laughs> still sleeping, working on her REM. Mm -hmm. And I can't even hear that well as she tells me all the time when I don't hear the honey dews. Yeah. But I'm out of the bed flying that might be up a different the stairs. Issue. <laughs> but why is that? Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I drive an EV. We did a show with Pedram in the yeah. Tesla. Nice. But, you know, when the guy passes me and slows down, why am I ready to honk the horn? Or mm -hmm. I, the, the Tesla's got these two buttons that are thumb mouses to control the car, but I'm using them as missiles. <laughs> and I want to shoot paint bombs at them. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So why do, why do I think those thoughts? Uh -huh. You know, when I had the greenest home in the world for a while, yeah. the highest lead platinum, right. it still felt small. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. And so I had to go into my own brain. I had to hire people who are neuroscientists and hypnosis folks mm -hmm. to look at how can David, even with his readings and studies, how can I become more humane myself. And I came up with something called the E-revolution. You take the word human, which is to be frail, to, to live in civilizations, to err, mm -hmm. and you slap an E at the end of the word, how can I become humane? And I mm -hmm. call it the E-revolution. Yeah. So to get to that, I, meet, I needed to meet Sarah to sure. learn that I have a prefrontal cortex. She <laughs> calls it a P, PFC. Yeah. Maybe mine was shut off mm -hmm. because I played tackle football for 11 years. And because we're male, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just got slammed too many times and, and I'm male. Right. Yeah, and even that, you just nailed it. We're, I'm a hunter. You're, you know, mm -hmm. That male thing is so my family gets the food. Right. Well, when I go out there, I have these the kill instinct. I know how to track. Mm-hmm. What do you do if there's other hunters getting the food that you need for your family? Right. You can't come home with no food. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell you to sleep outside. Right. Yeah. So it started to get me interested in reading books like Buddha Brain, Rick mm -hmm. Hansen. We met him. We had dinner. Oh, nice. And I started to learn about the breath and meditation and you know, how do I calm myself down the parasympathetic system, mm -hmm. which I never had. I only knew fight or flight. Right. <laughs> and I'm starting, it made me wonder of can, can eco greens work with health experts mm -hmm. and neuroscientists to take plasticity, which is this fabulous invention yeah. just of the last 20 years mm -hmm. and look at our rewiring of our brains. Can we be humane? Can we take our survival wiring that helped us hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago to mm -hmm. survive? It's not helping us now. Yeah. And what does that new wiring look like? And how do so you, you install it? 
What's that? How do you install it? We need the new OS. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a regenerative OS. It's a humane operating system. Mm -hmm. And a lot of all your work is about being humane to your body. Mm -hmm. What you put in that mouth, also what the mouth is saying that comes out of it. Right. And even your music maybe is about a deeper message. Right. Always. Yeah. It's, it's access to, uh, to flow and you can measure that, right? Like you, you can measure what the brain is doing when you're operating, when you're firing on all cylinders in the right way, in a, in a clean burning way, maybe, you know, like as opposed to the fight or flight, like you were talking about before in the parasympathetic, where you're just kind of amped up all the time and, and gunning for it as most of us naturally are as type A's. And I think the reason that, that Sarah for you probably has been such a good teacher is because she's exactly the same way too. And she's had to slay a few demons of her own. I think we all have, um, in order to get to where we are, where we are, but what else can we do to kind of stack the deck to make sure that like what we're doing every day, uh, is, is the right thing, not just for our own bodies, but the world around us. Well, as Eckhart would probably say, it starts with checking the ego at the door <laughs> yeah, and loving your family inside and your kids and watching how you live and what you put in your mouth and comes out of it. Right. And your do you live with intentionality? So I'm not going to get into the food and the health. That's your area. But I'll add perhaps a little bit about intentionality in the yeah, green area. Please. So we're all living somewhere. We all, at some point in our lives, buy homes. We clean them up. We paint them. We renovate them. We buy furniture and stuff that we bring inside. Yeah. We also consume energy and water and create waste. And we drive something or hopefully you don't and you walk and bike, but yeah. in your home, you can buy different paints that don't have what we call VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Mm -hmm. That's the new car smell that actually makes us sick and has yeah. other problems. So buy paints that are certified with no VOCs and they mm -hmm. exist. There's different brands. Don't buy that furniture that is cheap and when you put it together with the one tool, it smells for three months. Yeah, right. Uh, Pedram calls it the cancer smell. Get it. <laughs> and, and that's what it is, yeah. Get it out. Yeah. You don't put it in the nursery. Right. When you put in new carpet, you don't even need glue for some of these carpets now, even in your office. They're 18-inch mm -hmm. square tiles that just are held together with pressure. You don't need that. Yeah. Uh, you, when you buy things, even I don't like perfumes in the house. Look at all the, if something smells, it's probably not great yeah. for you. There, there are certain plants that smell. A lot of the ones that smell a lot, actually, I'm allergic to. Oh, really? <laughs> so keep the stuff out. Take your shoes off mm -hmm. at the front door. You're tracking in crap, maybe even lead that was in right, the yeah. soil. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's and, a good point. Can you walk? <laughs> where can you walk barefoot these days? Like, is there anything that we should be keeping in mind that we're probably not right now? Well, I wouldn't walk barefoot under the bridge. Yeah, because there was leaded fuel for years just flying out of the exhaust. Right. I wouldn't walk barefoot, you know, near utility stuff, mm -hmm. and or at a waste dump. I think the beach, most beaches are still fine and. Yeah a lot of nature and uh, Sarah recommends that highly. She's mm -hmm. going barefoot to ground herself and get some uh, ionic flows going that didn't happen. Sure. In our homes where the biggest problem is the energy waste mm -hmm. and our biggest problem on earth is the climate. And we're at 401.88 particles per million in May. Mm -hmm. That's the latest and the steady state of the scientists uh, of the world is 350. Wow. And so we have to tighten up our homes with insulation under your crawl space. You can blow cellulose in the walls. Mm -hmm. You can even have it in the attic. 
If you're designing a home, make sure it's energy efficient, push on your architect, mm -hmm. put in good windows once you have the insulation, the dual panes with the good argon gas. They're even moving towards better super windows. Yeah. Then the appliances you're buying by Energy Star mm -hmm. appliances, the EPA has that label. They're not only your computers, but it's your dishwashers, your refrigerators. Right. Uh, you can have water efficient dishwashers that go on, they're quiet and water efficient. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put little things on your faucets and your showers the, that uh, are air, aerators that use less water. They're yeah. huge. Our aquifers are drying up. That's the next global problem. Mm -hmm. Almost, uh, you know, hundreds of cities in the U.S. and and and. Globally, China is almost out of the water. Mm -hmm. 30 cities in California are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Our governor declared a water emergency earlier this year, requiring yeah. a 20% improvement. Uh, you can capture your water. The easiest way to do it is a rainwater barrels. Mm -hmm. And you can use that for your landscaping or washing your car. Uh, next, you can capture your shower water, your tub water. We call it gray water. Yeah. You can use that and treat it slightly for your landscaping. Um, I took rainwater in our old home and pumped it to the toilet and had the pleasure of peeing on rainwater. <laughs> I love that as a one-liner, actually. <laughs> I think I'm going to use that. You can. Uh, oh, go ahead. It, well, I was, I was just going to say that this is all... Fantastic. Where, um, but if we're at a place that's so delicate right now, obviously things can't continue the way that they're going. There has to be some monumental shift um, in our behavior that really drives a lot of this. And we're starting to see it, right? And I, I think we can all agree that there is hope now where there might not have been as much when awareness wasn't as high and when people really didn't rally behind uh, some of the changes that need to be made to make sure that we're not all dead by 2030 or 2050 or whatever, or at least that that our kids, the next generation and the generation after that actually have a world that they can live in without wearing a gas mask or <laughs> underground or whatever you might see in sci-fi movies. Um, so where do you see uh, that shift happening and, and how, is it something that's a slow burn and we just kind of like see a bunch of little changes or is there something big that, you know, the experts in the field, like you all know about, but the, the masses might not, um, like, what are we not in terms of any sort of conspiracy theory, but just like w w from what vertical in society, right. W w does that come from? Well, you, you can map the shift. So it's definitely there. Yeah. Uh, a guy I just love, everything he does is Paul Hawken. He wrote Ecology of Commerce, Natural Capitalism. Mm -hmm. He wrote a book called Blessed Unrest that mapped over a million points of life, of light, of eco grassroot initiatives. And wow. he stopped cool. counting at a million. Wow. So that gave us hope that it's grassroots, but it's mm -hmm. also government. Sure with hundreds of ordinances for green building here in the US with tax credits for green building for solar mm -hmm. and new regulation, new building codes, new health initiatives, new rating systems, the yeah. next organic right. or local or, or um, grass fed. But um, so I believe it's everything. It's, it's everything. It's carrot and the stick. Yeah. We need government and policy. We knew, need the economy at the table with new economic calculations for wealth mm -hmm. and value. If it's not green, it's not valuable. Right. If it hurts your health, causes endocrine disruptors and birth defects, that shouldn't make money. Mm -hmm. If it increases CO2 substantially, that's not great. Right. If it eradicates our soil from its ability to grow and creates dirt, mm -hmm. that's no good. If it yeah. sucks up the aquifer and it drops in the soil. So it's the economy, it's politics, yeah. it's government, and it's us. It's you right. and me. So one thing I think we could we could say right now is that usually when you go cheap on 
almost anything as a serial entrepreneur, you know, both of us actually, you kind of appreciate that that cheap can be the most expensive thing you ever do, right? If you go cheap on your team or your equipment, or if you buy a refrigerator that, you know, comes from a plant that doesn't make refrigerators, you know, and was hastily assembled. And that's the reason that it's so cheap. It's running inefficiently. It'll break down within, you know, it'll have one quarter or one small percentage of the lifespan of, uh, of basically investing in a green technology from the get-go. One example of that, like as a musician, uh, there are cables. You can get these cables on eBay, Amazon, whatever, to plug the guitar into the amplifier, for example, or you know the microphone into uh, the PA system or whatever. And you can get them for like a couple bucks. Or um, you can get them for 20 to 30, depending on the length and the size or whatever. But let's just say one's $2 and one's 20. And you can go on eBay right now and I'm sure find that. Um, I have tried buying the $2 cables and I'll tell you what happens. Most of the time they work, at least for a little while, but in the middle of the show, they, you know, start buzzing or blow up or something terrible happens. Uh, and they usually just don't have any sort of lifespan there. And so, you know, you're burning through these cables, um, at, at a rate of speed that, um, you know, ticks you off and makes you frustrated and make sure that you're not getting anything done really. Um, as opposed to, I like monster cables. They, you know, have nothing to do with the show or whatever, but you buy a monster cable and they have power strips and other stuff too. And basically you're buying a service. You're buying uh, a guarantee of a cable that works for its lifetime for like $20 or $30. Um, and so whether it's a refrigerator or a car or a house or anything else like that, if you kind of like take that leap to trust that investing that investing in like sustainability and efficiency and other things that work really well for a lifetime. Um, if you can make that leap right now, you're going to be thanking yourself when, you know, all of your neighbors are pulling their hair out because their inefficient systems are breaking down or they're spending too much on their utility bills or, you know, bigger than that, their house is not net zero, right? My, my folks are in New Hampshire trying to do just that and get off the grid and they've gotten really into solar and it's, it's so fun to watch. It's achievable. I drove my car um, across the country on spent vegetable oil in 2006 when I was working oh, in cool. alternative energy. It's like this stuff is fun and it's interesting and it's, it's not nearly as expensive as you usually think it is. But and so it works. It, it, it works. Yeah. So what would you say about like what are some things that people can do to make sure that they're uh, with the dollars that they're spending? Because that's really in large part their vote, right? Like how can they uh, point those toward things that are really going to be um, effective and and useful in the future, not just for themselves, but for the world at large. Yeah, and uh, when you say cheap, it, it's actually more expensive because right. it's, it's hurting the earth, it's hurting your health, mm -hmm. it breaks down. The, the you just have to buy more and create more waste. Blows more waste. Up. Yep. You have to do a retake and then you pay more labor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, there's just so many things you can do they may appear a higher first cost, but they'll mm -hmm. save energy. So when you replace your furnace in your house, go for an Energy Star one with a SEER, S-E-E-R, mm -hmm. rating of over 90. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's quality. What we're talking about is quality. Yeah. And quality is going to be healthier. These better furnaces, some of them have modules for keeping the pollutants out. They have right. an air module. When you buy a crap bed you know, what is that mattress made of? Mm -hmm. And is that something you want to be inhaling? Yeah, do you want to be huffing that for the next 20 years? <laughs> yeah, when you buy a crap car, uh, some of them actually can get good MPGs, but mm -hmm. um, they're going to break down, they're going to pollute more, you have to replace it so its life is short. Mm -hmm. You have to look at a 20, 30 year life to these things. Uh, in terms of cars, there's the EVs, which I think are awesome. Mm -hmm. There's so many of them. There's the hybrids. Certainly the Prius was the best. But you're talking about biodiesel. And mm -hmm. these old diesels can run, a lot of them can run 99% biofuel. Right. And not even old. I bought a new VW. I don't want to say too much about it because they say you can only run it on 5% biofuel. <laughs> you don't want to avoid the warranty. <laughs> 
And I did just that. I ran it on 99% wow. local French fries cool. for a year. Yeah. And I tracked it. And I just did more frequent oil changes. Mm -hmm. And it worked beautifully. That's awesome. And it smells like French fries when you pull up to the stop sign. <laughs> yeah, we have something called Biofuel Oasis. And, and I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. And diesel, you, for guys, it's, it's awesome mm -hmm. because you get torque for right. that alpha male. Yeah. And you get uh, fuel efficiency uh, in terms of MPGs, mm -hmm. and you can run it on a biofuel. You get more power. It's, it's awesome. I love it. But there's just so many things you can do uh, to be effective. You can look at the products and services you're offering and say, hey, what's the eco footprint of what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You should look at your legacy. Yeah. What's the legacy you're creating? And Abel, you're doing this great. You're planting seeds with every show that will grow. Mm -hmm. And you're watering the seeds. And when, when you're tired and you're making babies um, <laughs> or you're playing music on the river, yeah. those seeds are doing good in the world. Yeah. And that's the tikkun olam. And each day, I think we could look at the next day, how can you do better? Mm -hmm. How do you live with greater intention? How do you move from the amygdala uh, reaction to, towards the prefrontal cortex and mm -hmm. have uh, new wiring? How do you create that? And that's, yeah. through in, that's through thought, it's intention. It's also learning how you screwed up right. from your mistakes. The lessons learned, I think, are just the juice of life. Yeah, I love it. Well, David, we're just about out of time, but before we go, why don't we tell folks uh, where they can find you and what you're working on now and a little bit about your book. Sure. Uh, Explosion Green just came out. You can buy it at Amazon or Barnes & Noble, some bookstores. It's a memoir. <laughs> it's a story. I like to teach through story. Yeah. And a lot of it is self-deprecating because mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm often in the mud. <laughs> And uh, explosiongreen.com is my website. And if you want to learn more about the LEED Green Building Rating System or Green Building, you can go to usgbc.org. That's the U.S. Green Building Council and download LEED for free. And the world one, if you want to see what countries have them, is worldgbc.org. Cool. David, thank you so much for coming on. Um, if, if you folks are interested in what we've been talking about here today and especially lead and, and green building and also just cool storytelling and a little bit of background uh, into Sarah's Dirty Laundry as well, who's been on the show, um, check out Explosion Green. It's a really cool book. So David, thank you so much for coming on and tell Sarah I said hi. Thanks for having me and appreciate your great work. Always. <laughs>